So, you want to collect cards again? They said it'd be fun. You have no patience. Well, this is the show you need to listen to. We're going to give you all the advice required to get back into this industry as efficiently as possible. Listen, things have changed. Record profits are up. Over 400% growth year over year. Every segment is booming. Soccer, basketball, those are leading the way right now. You got all the big names charging the high value markets. Tune in. We're going to give you what you need. This is Cardboard Cutouts. Hi, and thanks for joining us here for our premiere episode of Cardboard Cutouts. We are going to be taking a look at the booming resurgence of the card collecting industry. As always, I'm going to be joined by Junior, but we are also going to have our first guest, a uh, very special guest, John O'Ware. And please make sure to watch all the way through to the very, very end as we're going to be breaking down some of the cards, some of the things that have been going on in the last few weeks. Junior, are you ready? Let's, Let's go. go. All right, let's jump right into it. We're going to bring Jonathan in here on our stream. John, welcome to the to the premiere episode of Cardboard Cutouts here. We welcome you. Welcome, welcome. Yep. Happy to be here, guys. Awesome, awesome. We're looking forward to seeing some of your insights, uh, you know, as a respected member of the community. Um, so what we're planning to do here is basically go through some basics on getting back into the business uh, of card collecting, what that hobby looks like. So I'm looking for your guys' insights on some of those tips and tricks and kind of getting back started in that space. Um, so why don't we start with you, John? Uh, when did you start collecting, you know, cards and, you know, what were you collecting when you first started? Yeah, I think I started collecting cards probably when I was like 10 years old. Uh, you know, I think that was 1990 on the nose. So I'm an 80s baby. I was probably right in the boom of the Habs being an awesome team. We started bringing in Patrick Waugh, you know, Kurt Muller, Desjardins, Guy Carboneau. And I was just like, I, I never had a bandwagon to jump, jump on. So I jumped on those guys. And, you know, I got introduced to hockey as uh, from my dad. And, you know, I just started to follow the sport. And part of that was... You know, before they had all this internet and craziness was you had to collect cards. <laughs> yeah. That's the only way you're going to learn about people is like the writing on the back of this piece of cardboard. Yeah. And that was really what I was doing. And, you know, upper deck sort of being the hot thing or maybe pro set at the time. And yeah. it's going to be worth tons and end up being worth pennies. But really, this is where it kind of like really sparked my interest was, geez, this is like just such a lucrative market already. Because I guess in the 80s, all these cards and all these great rookies like Iserman and, and, you know, and Ray Bork and all these guys started coming out and their cards were worth like 60 or 80 bucks. And back then yeah. it was nuts. Uh, I was probably, you know, 13, 14 when I really started getting into it. And it was, um, you know, was, you know you said, I don't know if I was a very respectable guy back then because I used to go to these card shows and I was, uh, you know, I was uh, a scavenger. I'd be going across and I'd be like analyzing all these tables and, you know, negotiating like crazy. It was, uh, it was a fun time. That's great. What about you, Junior? Oh, geez. Uh, I, I'd probably say around the same age, around 10. Um, I still remember the first pack of Opeechee hockey cards that I got, <laughs> uh, ended up in the spokes of my bike. Um, I was going to say that for sure. <laughs> And uh, after that, I think it was a couple of years that I started collecting hoops when they came out. Mm -hmm. um, the, the inaugural hoop set, I still have that complete set in, in a box. Uh, so it kind of got in there, you're 50 cents a pack back then. So it, it, it wasn't like you got five bucks, you walked to the corner store, you got yourself a bunch of cards, cracked them open. And, you know, I remember pulling like Larry Birds and Jordans. I mean, obviously these were like four or five years after their rookies were out well yeah 10 years for for bird but you know i pulled an admiral rookie so you know i i, I pulled some nice cards and i i still took care of them uh but then i i dropped out of it for geez like 30 years and just got back into it uh during the pandemic so i've got some first-hand knowledge to, to share about getting back into things because it's uh it's definitely changed for sure. It was, uh, I should check the wife is not listening either, but it was a Bobby Orr rookie. I probably bought, you know, pre pandemic. Oof. So a few years ago, but it still broke the bank. It broke the wallet, but, um, was best card I've ever bought. You know, I still like to like look at it and touch it and make oh, sure, sure. Drill on it. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Now, do you guys, are you guys looking at boxes? Do you guys zone in on a specific players? What's the method behind, you know, building out your collection? What does that look like? 
Uh, I'll say for me, the biggest mistake someone can do is go in with absolutely no focus and just start purchasing. Um, and I, I know from firsthand knowledge because that's exactly what I did. For me, if there's a guy you love, uh, like I love Ken Griffey Jr. So I focus predominantly on just cards themselves. But I also like to buy, you know, hobby boxes, blaster boxes of the new stuff coming out to get those new rookies. Okay. What about you, John? Yeah, I'm probably more like just card and and some sort of like system focus where it's like, what do you want to collect? Oh, I want to collect captains from a certain era. I want to mm. collect, you know, the oh, the captains of this team that won the Stanley Cup. You know what I mean? Through, you know, a certain you know, span of time. So, you know, I used to be, you know, to be honest with you, I never stopped collecting cards. Um, it might be a sign that I'm a real geek inside in that sense, but you know, it's, it's always been part of what I've been doing, um, you know, since 10 to now 40. So it's been a solid 30 years of collecting and I've gone through the boxes. Um, but I really started to focus on individual people and collecting every single card on that person. So I've been focusing on oh, wow. just, just hockey or whatever. And for instance, getting every Gretzky card, getting every or card, getting every Gordie Howe card. And that was really what I've been focusing on probably for the past 10 years is making that collection out because as you can appreciate, these cards are both, um, you know, semi rare, but also expensive. Yeah. So do you actually have a complete set of an actual player and the history of that player? All three of these guys. Oh, really? I'm done. Wow. I've collected them. I've got them all. And this wow. is where, you know, G, uh, Offside Junior here and I started shooting the, the crap over some uh, some text messages and some eBay bidding. And, yeah. you know, I, he kind of lit a fire under my butt to keep it going. Don't stop on those three guys. And you know, I think we were feeling each other to be crazy. And with this pandemic, you know, it's been a wild, uh, wild journey of expanding these collections. Yeah. That yeah. Okay. Well, what we've done is we've put together some snaps of some of the cards. So I want you guys, maybe we'll go back and forth. So we'll do one card each uh, between Junior and John. And let us know what you think the significance is just generally on the card, you know, to the industry, et cetera. Um, and then kind of, you know, just give me your take on that. So I'm going to show the deck here. Okay, so 1952, we saw this Mickey earlier. We commented on it, $5.2 million in April. Wow, that's crazy. Unreal. Uh, this was the LeBron James that went for 5.2 as well? Yeah. Jeez. There you go. That's unbelievable. Now, you know what's funny about this is once LeBron saw that this auctioned off on that, I believe he tweeted that he's seen a couple of those laying around his house. So he's, oh sitting, on, he's, he's sitting on a few of these, probably. Like, this is ridiculous in a sense. Like Again, like this, this um, card, the guy's still alive. Yeah. He can, he can sign a card. He can cut out a piece of his jersey. He can glue it on. He can kiss it. And he can have a picture of you beside him. Would you be able to sell it for 5.2 million? No. No. But this card, just because, like, this is where it gets really silly. Um, it just gets really silly. Um, yeah, you know what's yeah. interesting, too, is, like, uh, you know, if I was the purchaser of this of this card, then to find out that LeBron has a, a few of these sitting around, I mean, that's got to devalue this card basically right after the sale. Of course it does, because you have to understand, it says that they printed 23, but how many does he have? How many yeah. does Bronny have? How many does his wife have? So really, I mean, now you're talking about a card that they're saying there's 23 of them, but one guy has four, and it's just because it's his picture. Yeah. And yeah, that's, interesting. that's the one thing I don't get. So the Brady, this is the one that went for two, two and a quarter mil, yeah. uh, signed. This is also a rookie card. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Like, I, uh... I find it pretty cool, like, too, like, um, the football cards versus basketball versus hockey versus yeah. baseball. You, you might get a couple football cards that are worth quite a bit, but, like, mm -hmm. there's certain sports where, you know, there'll be, you know, a whole lot more valuable cards. 
Like it's just all like I, I feel like you, you can fill a stadium full of, of people who love football. Football is such a huge sport. Yeah. Uh, I, but I don't find that there's a huge following. There is a large Demand, following, yeah. but not versus like baseball or, or no. Well, listen, you could you could go on eBay right now and get a Joe Montana rookie card for under a thousand dollars. Like yeah. that that's <laughs> There you go. One of the greatest yeah. players ever, and you're yeah. getting his rookie card under a grand, but this guy's already 2.25, you know? Yeah. Well, what would you... Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, I was going to say, what would you guys say is the packing order for, you know, sports? Right now, in terms of the hobby industry as a yeah. whole, it's, yeah. it, it's, it's basketball and then it's soccer right now. Oh, so baseball and hockey are, are fall below those two. Yeah. I guess considering soccer and basketball probably are the most globally played sports because you need very little equipment. Yeah. Um, but I'm surprised that, you know, that maybe baseball wouldn't be up there a, a little higher. But uh, Kobe rookie card, I mean, again, you know, when we talk about technology and the ability to, you know, you know, RIP to Kobe, and I got a Kobe autograph uh, on that Slam magazine when I met him in 2002. He was kind enough to give me the only autograph I saw him at uh, Hooters restaurant after a Leaf game downtown. And, uh, you know, quite the story, quite the story. I got to shake his hand, and, uh, you know, funny enough, somebody called my dad the next day and offered us tickets to see the Lakers <laughs> like that, you know, the afternoon Raptor game. And, uh, yeah, it was a memorable experience, but, you know, again, when we're talking about technology, the ability to go out and try to buy these cards up, you know, after the tragic loss of him and, uh, you know, the others on that, um, you know, this is this is a card for sure that, you know, I would I would covet quite quite a bit. And it's funny yeah. that it only sold for 1.4. I mean, that's probably up now, I would imagine. <laughs> it's probably already gotten, well, this, this he, he, already, he had already passed when this card got sold. But you'll oh, sorry, that's right. Signi- there's no signature on it. No, you know, there's, there's nothing special things, about this card. There's nothing special. So, like, you know, I think it's huge to have. Well, when he passed away, if you like that, like that, within those hours, if you went and like I was, I'm pretty sure everybody that was collecting yeah. cards was going and trying to buy his shit right away. And like, it's it's a near knee jerk, you know, reaction to a pro athlete that you have no connection to personally to go and try to make money off of his card or try to buy the stuff up before it did. But like, what you would want is you, the card is one thing, but the cards with his autograph are yeah. going to be worth 10 times more than any just individual card because he physically touched the card, he physically signed it. Yeah, I gotta pull this. I gotta pull this. I gotta pull this. I gotta. I gotta pull this down because the the story behind this. Let me try to get the best shot I can of that. Oh yeah. So this, when I saw him, it was December twenty first of twenty twenty two, or sorry, two thousand and two. Now the funny thing is, with magazines, they usually only come out like the month, like you know, December in December, like around that time. January is available, right? Mm. So I get a phone call. I'm already on my way home after the Leaf game at this point. I get a phone call from. You know, a chain of phone calls because my parents didn't have my phone number. Long story short, because I didn't want them to have my phone number, know where they could find me, right? <laughs> but anyways, I get a, I get a phone call finally. I run down to Hooters. I'm already kind of way past again. Like you know, I'm I'm, I'm heading home basically at this point. And you know, I bust through the doors and I see him. I see because my, my dad went there for some wings with his buddies after, and I see him there. And it's like, oh, what did you bring to sign? This is pre camera phones. This is pre. You know, there's no cameras, but, you know, my dad's like, did you bring a camera? I said, like, a camera? Like, what am I buying, a disposable camera at a convenience store? You know, you told me Kobe Bryant's here. I ran, like, a kilometer and a half just to get here to try to catch a glimpse of this guy. So I shot up to the chapters there going, hey, Slam Magazine, this guy's coming off three. Cha- this is off the three-peat, right, with Shaq. Yeah. So this is the following season. And I go I go to pull the magazine. I go, he's going to, you know, he's going to be in the Slam Up. There's going to be a picture of him somewhere. You know, long story short, this is the February issue. It's not even supposed to be on the shelf. You know, so if this isn't on the shelf there, I don't get that, you know, perfect kind of uh, picture with Kobe there and sat at his table, shook his hand, and I insulted him a little bit, and then we kind of kept it moving, so. Yeah, that's awesome. But rest in peace to Kobe, and uh, let's keep it moving here. Wayne Gretzky, Oilers, rookie card, Opeachy. Junior, you have this card? No, someone else does. We, we know John has it then. <laughs> I actually have the uh, the anniversary edition of this card. 
but no, nowhere near as cool as this one. Yeah, this one's a real tough one to get in, in any sort of pristine sort of shape. You know, yeah. I think even when I was looking at this one and, and you saw the, the roughed edges, I've seen other ones that are um, very similar in it, in their cut without that sort of fluff. Yeah. Oh, no, that's OPG, and that's because of the way that they use the wires or whatever. But the reality is that having a hockey card break the one million mark was huge for the hockey card industry. Yeah, massive. Um, it was massive, and there's nobody better to have done it than the still alive Wayne Gretzky, probably the most you know um, most appreciated and, and you know genuine hockey players that ever mm -hmm. sort of stepped that on the ice, but. Like what a cool card this one is for for the kids of the '80s and, and '90s, you know, remembering this card as the as the as the Grail. Yeah. Um, and I read a little bit about it. He's looking. I think they're in overtime, or they're at the third period. He's looking up at the at the big clock on the you know in the, in the center ice or whatever center ice, and, yeah. and I think it's just a few seconds left in the period, and and that's it. That's the that's the moment that he captured in time. So there's a lot of cool history about this card. For instance, it's OPG yeah. versus the tops. The tops was produced in the U.S. The OPG was in Canada. The the tops they used actual um, knives to cut the to cut the, the oh, cards in, in Canada, they were using the, the wires and that's why it's got that braided edge um, where it's a little bit fluffy. Mm -hmm. um, and this is also why it's actually very difficult to get an OPG in, in a PSA 10 because yeah. the way that they cut it, the way that it was treated, um, was just, you know, it was just a, a more difficult um, card to, to get in a high grade. So yeah. it's a beauty, it's a beauty card, you know, well, for think... any collector, you don't need to be anybody specific. If you got this card, it's a great card to have. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, I think that that card got the 10 mainly because of the cornering, because you do see that fraying a lot. So, I mean, it's obviously the cut issues, but even just looking at the bordering on it from left to right, you can Looks see like that a there's a bit center. of a distinct off center, but not yeah, enough. And that's to... the thing too. Like it's tough. And this is part yeah. of PSA, which we're going to start to get into a, a cat fight about soon. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Okay, we've got another Luca here, 4.6 million. I mean, to me, this is just absolute outrage. Yeah. <laughs> How do you pay four point? I mean, I could I could pay Luca 4.6 million. He could play on my team next year. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> you know what I mean? I could have this guy come out to my house league, my summer league games. Uh, yeah, do a house party for your for your kid or something like that, right? You know what I mean? You could like, be in there just... rocking your baby right now outside. Yeah. I mean, this is this is just absolute insanity. Um, well, I mean, the, the logo man does end up pretty well set in that box, but it should be if you are got a print run called Logo Man. Um, <laughs> yeah. The logo should be centered pretty well in that cutout. But, you know, I, again, I think this is just uh, someone, it's a one of one, and a guy probably said, you know, how much you want for it? And the guy was like, give me $4.6 million. And he was like, okay. Yeah, he's got he's got twenty billion in the bank, yeah, exactly. right? Is Be Bezos bought this card yes. maybe. Uh, with the guys, you know what I mean? So, um, you know, I'm really looking forward to uh, uh, vaccinations so we can get back out there and start collecting cards like we did in the old days, man. Yeah, exactly. Awesome, awesome. Well, uh, thanks, guys. I think that's going to be a wrap for us. So, a special thanks to John Aware. Follow him on Twitter at John Aware. Thank you for joining us. Looking forward to seeing more of that collection. I uh, want to thank everybody who's watching for joining us. Uh, we appreciate your attention and your feedback. So please consider hitting that subscribe button as well as liking or commenting on this video. Uh, we will be back with more cardboard cutouts. So certainly stay tuned and follow us on our IG channel, which is where we promote these types of shows for YouTube or just hitting that subscribe button. We'll continue to pop those notifications up. For everybody here at Offside and Out of Bounds, I'm Adam. I'm Junior. And that's Jono. See, See you real, real soon. soon.